If you're signed up to Sinai software, you're going to be able to use it for free. For the next three months, go through, give it a try, give us some uh, things to suggest, uh, things to do. Uh, let's talk about what I got in here right now. We'll just start something rendering. So um, this is our scatter interface, and it's very similar to the most of our other stuff. Uh, our, in the back here, we have a background of 705 trees, so that's 370,000 polys. All right, these are not light trees. These are ever motion trees we've gone through for the heavy of the heavy. So that's the background stuff. Uh, the foreground one, because I have two scatters in here, is 305,000 objects. And we're at 1.8 billion, almost 1.9 billion polys. All right, so I, it's probably safe to say we are over 2 billion polys in this scene right now. Um, so, um, and let's take a look at our memory. Right now we're floating around at six gig uh, on my laptop, which is 16 gig lap laptop. Uh, of course, rendering this is gonna go up a little bit, but let's see how it fares. Uh, so I'm gonna hit F9 here, and let's bring our memory back up. And I'm going to talk to you what about what it's doing. So right now it's on instances O2. So it's already gone through and it's built all the back stuff already. And now it has the daunting task of going through and building up um, 300 and I think it was 305 million objects uh, of Evermotion heavy trees. So um, we're... You can see right now, and it's already done. It's built this up. It's going to start to render. There's hardly any boost in RAM. I mean, there's going to be a little bit. There's six, two gig boost in RAM to uh, render out two billion polys, uh, which is a lot of objects. So um, we're getting there. Um, right now, um, our scatter is in beta, so it's going to stay that way for the next three months. Uh, so anybody who is signed up to our uh, website is going to be able to, and just has the free forensic, is going to be able to go and play with this for the next three months. Give us suggestions, you know, tell us what you like, what it needs to be changed. So the memory-wise, um, right now we're optimized for V-Ray. Um, we we're working with the Corona guys and we're almost there. So as soon as that's set, uh, it'll do the same mem memory management in Corona and the other renderers in the future. Uh, but we're in pretty good shape. If you try to render um, 2 billion polys in max and you had 305 instances, max would just crash. So uh, we always, you know, that when building tools like that, you have to work with the render engine companies and sort of um, work with them and let us let them build the geometry when they're in render time because that's the only time that max is truly multi-threaded. Um, because you've sh they've shut down the interface. That's why you can't do anything at render time. You know, when anything's rendering, you can't just do anything. Um, that's uh, the reason they, they can get true multi-threading. So, um, with that said, uh, we've rendered out enough of this. Uh, so you can see there's not much memory um, loss at all. Uh, we have um, a lot of different tools in here that we've put into place, and some of this stuff is going to change by our release, which would be Friday or Monday, I believe. Uh, we just want to make sure everything works pretty well before we put this out as our first little beta. Um, we have a stats window in here, and that's going to show you sort of what you have in your in your scene. So, you know, you'll get an object count, a poly count, a vert count. And if you see acceleration on here, that means that you, we support the render engine that you're using right now. Um, it'll still render um, in other render engines. It's just you're not going to be able to render 2 billion polys in, you know, a simple Max scene because we're using 3D Studio Max to make the instances and build the geometry and render it before we send it to the render engine. Um, so, yeah, um, look for this. And like I said, Corona's coming soon. All right, so uh, our distributed, pretty much you pick a mesh that you're gonna scatter objects on. We have display modes. Uh, we can actually go in here and say, hey, I just wanna see the clover, and it's just gonna show me the clover. So the different display modes are sort of useful if you're going in. So I could say clover, and then if it's not super heavy, you could try and go to full mesh, but um, it's gonna have to build a lot of stuff on the fly. 
Now, one thing that we did put in here is you can animate this over time. Uh, so you will not get like the other scatter engines, you will not get popping as you are to render, animate this going down. So you could have a forest growing up um, and do that. And also that works with painted objects. Um, our distributed objects, pretty much the same as what you're gonna see in Cyclone and Disperse and all of those. It's the very same menu. Uh, what we will be adding is there will be a distributed object map for each object. So you'll go in here, everything will use a global, uh, which is right now using a full map. So you see all the maps are here. Um, I can simply just go pick whatever I want or add my own. Uh, but we're gonna add this feature in where you'll have a different map for each object. So that should help. Uh, painting and erasing, uh, we have nice single object painting, we have multi object painting and erasing. Uh, this is a selective paint and erase. So uh, when you use the erase tool, it's not just erasing all the trees that you have there. Um, if you hit the erase tool, you can put probability down to, you know, erase 20% of what you're erasing and I just want to erase the ivy, so that'll erase just that. Uh, so it's a selective painting and erasing. I uh, sort of went over the distributed maps already. Um, color correction. This is exactly what uh, is in all of our other tools. It's the same color correction. So you can actually get a texture or color variation in your models at render time. And there is name filtering as well. So uh, material filtering where you could actually bring this down and say, hey, I want to color correct on everything except for bark. And you can do that. Uh, exclusion spline. So I'm already using that. I have an exclusion spline where the riverbed is and then on the um, selected the um, trees in the background I have an exclusion spline that sort of excludes this center area. So uh, camera clipping. So everything that if I was to turn this on anything is obviously not in the camera view and an expansion of that so you can see shadows um, from objects that are off the screen. Um, that is uh, a handy feature when you have big, big, big scenes and you want to render this out. I'll save you geometry that needs to build. And then exporting out, our last thing. So the export settings, uh, you can export as a multi-mesh or a single objects. Now, what that is, is you're gonna click on and there'll be a drop down here for this. You'll select what object you want to take out. So if I want to export out the grass, I can. Uh, I can take that out as individual objects or I can take out all the grass as one mesh. Now, you, you, this is more of a, I guess, natural selection thing for you. Um, if Obviously, if you have 305,000 pieces, um, you, it's not going to come out in max. Uh, you're just going to freeze it up. Um, it's not made for that. It's made if you've um, taken about a sensible amount, um, then you could export it out. So if I took the trees out, um, 705, that's probably fine. I could take those out as um, all instances and that'd be okay. So you have to sort of use this, um, the export with a little common sense. All right, well, that's it. Um, if you guys haven't heard of us, uh, jump over to SinaiSoftware.com and um, simply log in. And um, as of Monday or Tuesday, we'll be releasing this uh, beta for Scatter, and you'll be able to play around with it for free. Um, and let us know what we're missing or should add or things that are useful to you. Thanks a lot, guys. See you.